Last week I spoke about God's gift of knowledge. Continuing on that theme of knowledge, I'm going to address wisdom. We can have knowledge and know something, but do we have the wisdom to properly apply that knowledge in our life? Knowledge is really the ability to discern inner qualities and relationships. That's an insight. Knowledge is the ability to accumulate facts. And what do we do with those facts? Knowledge is the ability to have a wise attitude or a course of action. Knowledge gives us the ability to have wisdom in teaching others, teaching others about God. Basically, wisdom is the art of being successful. Formulating the correct plan to gain the desired result. God has a plan for all of us, and he has a desired result for all of us. Do we have the right knowledge and the wisdom to be able to put that plan together? Wisdom should be at the seat of our heart. It's the center of our intellectual decisions. Kings and leaders in the Old Testament had a special need of wisdom. They were chartered with the responsibility to make the correct decisions in all political and social affairs. We know about King David. We know about Solomon, his son. They were granted wisdom to enable them to deal with their official duties. David was blessed with an amount of wisdom. And Solomon, his son, also was blessed with this wisdom. Now I'm going to tell a story from 1 Kings and chapter 3. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you. But in 1 Kings and chapter 3, the first part of that story talks about Solomon's prayer for wisdom. Solomon prayed for wisdom. The Lord appeared to Solomon. And Solomon asked God for wisdom, and God answered him. Solomon wanted the wisdom. He prayed to God to be able to have the wisdom to do the job that he was blessed with of being the king. And God came to him in a dream. And God answered Solomon's prayer. And God said to Solomon, I will bless you with the wisdom. As a matter of fact, I'm going to give you more wisdom, and no other king is going to be able to have the great wisdom that I am embarking upon you. God was also impressed with Solomon's prayer, whereas Solomon didn't pray for riches. Solomon didn't pray for his enemies being uh, killed. God said, I'm not only going to bless you with the wisdom that you asked me for, but because you are not greedy, because the only thing that you've come to me for is the wisdom, I'm also going to bless you abundantly with riches. And I'm going to bless you abundantly with those leadership skills that you need. So the beginning part of 1 Kings in chapter 3 Again, I'll repeat, it talks about Solomon's prayer for wisdom, and he praises the Lord. He opens up the praise of the Lord, and the Lord does appear to him in a dream. And they have this dialogue, and he wakes up, and he has that aha moment, and he realizes he has indeed been blessed with wisdom. Now, he was tested. Two harlots, prostitutes, however you want to call them, came to the king one day. Now the king 
has the ability to listen to all the people. It doesn't matter who they are. So here we have, for better lack of terms, two prostitutes. And they're living in the same house. And they each deliver a baby, a son. And they had them within a couple of days of each other. Nobody was in the house or present nor witnessed the birth of these children. One woman had hers, the other woman had hers. Well, one night, shortly after the birth of both of the children, the one woman rolled over on top of her baby and suffocated it. Killed the child. What she did was deplorable. She took her dead baby and swapped it with the other woman's baby. And put her dead baby next to the other woman and took the baby that was living. Well, the other woman, when she woke up to feed her child, realized, oh my, my goodness, my baby is dead. And when she further examined the child, she came to the realization, this is not my baby. Now there was a dispute. They were both saying, the living child is theirs. Mm -hmm. So when there were disputes like that, where did they go? They went to the king. These disputes were brought before the king. Mm -hmm. So, King Solomon listens to the uh, two women and hearing, you know, the, both of them saying, no, this is my baby, no, this is my baby, no, this is my baby. So he has to decide on who is the true mother. Mm -hmm. Now today in court, It'd be easy. We're going to do a DNA test. Judge really didn't have to figure anything out. We're just going to do a, a DNA testing and he's going to give a ruling. He didn't have to use his own wisdom today. Today we've got technology. Back then, what we had was the discernment, the knowledge that was brought to the king by the two women, and how he was going to apply that knowledge in his wise thinking to determine who the mother was. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure he thought about it a little bit. And he says, bring in a sword. <laughs> and before the two women, he says, I'm going to settle this right now. Mm -hmm. We're going to cut the baby in two. I'm going to give half to you and half to you. Oh, boy. Wow. What a shocking remark. You know, we're just going to cut this baby in two. Now, he had no intention in the back of his mind that that was going to happen. But that was a test. And what that allowed the true mother came forward and said, no, 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 let her have the child, because the true mother wanted that baby to live. Right. Whereas the other woman, who wasn't the true mother, said, yeah, go ahead and cut him in two. Mm. So they each made a statement about what, what his decision was. So the king knew immediately. He was given the wisdom to make that thought, and he knew immediately who the true mother was and who the child was to go to. Amen. Now, Linda, if you could for me read the last verse of 1 Kings and chapter 3. When all Israel heard of the judgment which the king had handed down, they feared the king, for they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to administer justice. Thank you. So this story spread far and wide, and the people realized that he had great wisdom, and they realized that that wisdom was provided to him through the power of God. Amen. Wisdom in the fullest sense belongs to God alone. His wisdom is not only completeness of knowledge that prevails in the realm of life, but it also consists in his, his meaning God's, irresistible fulfillment of his plan that he has for mankind. God has all the knowledge and God has all the wisdom. And he has a plan. And he knows how to apply that in his knowledge. Wisdom is derived from natural abilities or acquired experience as a gracious gift. God makes wisdom possible for us. We just don't get it. Hmm. It's given to us. We have to pray for it. 
We have to ask God to provide it to us. Remember, knowledge was a gift of God. We talked about that. Wisdom is something that we need to ask for so we can utilize that knowledge in a wise and discerning fashion. It will allow us to make the right choices in our lives. 2 Timothy in chapter 3, verse 15, reads, And that from childhood you have known the sacred writings which are able to give you the wisdom that leads to salvation through faith which is in Jesus Christ. Now think about this. We're given the wisdom, we pray to God, and He's giving us an awareness of what it takes for salvation. The unwise person does not have that awareness of what it takes for salvation. And you know me and my evangelistic ways. I always like to preach about salvation. So it takes wisdom through the, and, and applying the knowledge that we have to understand the salvation message. It takes faith because in here it talks about leads to salvation through faith. Romans, which is one of Mark's favorite books, and we're doing in Bible study right now, but we didn't get to this chapter yet. And Romans chapter 11 and verse 33 continues to support this. Oh, the depths of the riches of both the wisdom and knowledge of God. Of both the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments, and unfathomable his ways. So again, this is talking about there's going to be a judgment day and there's going to be a period of time when those of us who don't have the wisdom to know what it really takes for true salvation, they indeed are going to be punished for it. I have one other, and actually two other proverbs I'm going to share today. In Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 5, it reads with an exclamation point, Acquire wisdom. Acquire understanding. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Now this is Solomon talking about his boyhood. Talking about his parents who taught him. They taught him about God. And he, in turn, passed the same instructions on to his sons. He goes, acquire wisdom and acquire understanding. So perhaps David's encouragement, Solomon's father, to help him get wisdom, influenced Solomon to ask for it, ask God for it. Because Solomon knew about his father's life. So perhaps David's words inspired Solomon to ask God for the wisdom. And Solomon's passing that same knowledge down to his sons. As I'm trying to embark it to us today, we need to ask God for wisdom. How many?